Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this tutorial I'm going to be going over how to use views and a little bit of cameras inside of Game Maker Studio 2. I did a Game Maker Studio 1, and this one's a little bit different because we're actually going to be using some functions to get at the built-in properties. That way it's more configurable and is going to work even when you change views, so it's very nice. So what we're going to end up creating is something very similar to this. We're going to have text and a sprite drawn, and those are going to stay even when our view shifts and our player moves like this. I've got this cube moving with my mouse, and you can see the text and the sprite that I have being drawn are, with, are in the same place even though the view is shifting around. So we're going to do this through using some built-in functions that GameMaker provides. So let's start off and we're going to create a couple of sprites. We're going to make a square. We're just going to fill this in. This is just going to be a nice tan. I uh, just need to fill actually. Put a nice tan on that and we'll just make sure it's middle center. Not that important though. And we'll put a sprite triangle inside of here. And we'll do kind of a nice dark blue. And we'll fill this up just like that. And that's all we need for sprites. And we actually only need one object inside of here. And I'm just going to call this OBJ. And then inside of the object, we're going to add a step event. And this step event is going to just move it with the mouse. So it's going to say mouse is x equals mouse x and y is equal to mouse y. This way we don't have to set up controls on the keyboard, it's just nice and simple. It's going to follow our mouse around, so it'll still work with the views. Then we're going to add a draw event. Just a regular draw event, not a draw GUI event, which you can use even when you're using views, but it's a little more unintuitive and it not, might not be what you want. So, we are going to use this draw event, and the first thing we're going to put in here is just draw self. And we'll come back to this in just a minute because we're going to go into our rooms and we are going to place, uh, ooh, not the sprite, we're going to place the object inside of here and let's remember to give it a sprite. Now in our room, um, I'm going to come in here and change the color of this because we're going to draw a square later on so I just want it to be distinct. And I'm going to add an asset layer and I'm just going to plug in these uh, triangles and hold down Alt and then I can click and I can add these in just like this and this is a nice quick way and I don't have to have more objects and this asset layer allows me to put sprites in here that way we can look like we're moving around and I'm going to move my instance layer up just so that it appears on top of those when we are running the game but that's all it does okay so now let's jump into room settings so uh, your width and your height over here you should know that it is the actual width and height of your room and you can change those if you want to make the room bigger or smaller. I'm not going to really worry about those because what I want to touch on is viewports and cameras. So you have eight viewports that you can use and you can use these to your advantage in a lot of different ways including split screen functionality and you can also have like a room set up that has um, one thing in the far corner that you only ever see if you change to that view, like you could have a menu room that has all of the different options in there for different views, things like that. But the way we're going to use it is our viewport zero we're going to select and we're just going to have this follow around our object, our player object here, and we are going to move it around the room and we're going to draw something on the screen, kind of like a menu where uh, if you had an inventory or something else on the screen that you wanted to stay with the player but maybe you don't want the player to actually be drawing it because you want it to be in a third party object and this is a way that you're going to be able to do that. Before we jump into actually drawing it I want to make sure we are on the same page for views and how they work. The first thing you have to do is enable the viewport. If you don't do that nothing's going to happen. The next thing is you need to choose the viewport that will be visible. Um, you can see here, as soon as I click that, a thick white border comes up and you can see that that is going to be the view of the room. So that is actually going to be under camera properties. And now viewport, we're going to talk about first because this is going to be the actual window, the size of the window that comes up that you play your game in. So right now it's the default starting size, so if I run it, by pressing F5, it's going to come up with a good sized window right here, you can see. Um, that 
is the size that we have set right here. And if we change this to something like 400 by 400, the physical size of that, or I guess digital size of that, is going to change drastically. So this was how you adjust it for different sizes, uh, different resolutions. Uh, you can go full screen, you can do mobile displays, stuff like that. This is what you'll actually change to, to, to change what's being shown. Now let's change this back. And I want to show you something really important. This viewport, now you understand what that does. And then this camera, which is kind of like another view, but they've kind of renamed it in Game Maker Studio 2, um, is this white square outline that is being drawn right now. So everything inside of there will show up in your viewport, in the window that is being shown to the player. So you can shrink this down. Ooh, that's a little too small. So you can shrink that down tremendously, but if you do not keep the resolution similar, uh, you're going to find very strange uh, display quirks happening in your game. So I'm going to set this to follow my player just so that we can kind of see the square because it is easy to look at. So it is now compressing that 400 by 400 size, and you can see this square is no longer a very uh, square-like shape. Although it's not hugely off, so let me fix that even more. So let's go with a height of 800. And so now it has to compress this really strange size into this square viewport, and this is what you end up with. And if this is what you want with your game, that's great. Now you know how to do it. But if you don't want this with your game, then you have to realize that you need to choose a width and a height of your camera that is similar to your width and height of your viewport. Normally, just a, a regular resolution, like a monitor resolution, 1920 by 1080, uh, 1024 by 768, the things that come up here, if you do something like that in multiples of 32, you will probably be fine, and you won't have any strange display quirks happening like that. So what I'm going to do is actually just do half of the width and the height. So 1024 is actually 512, and then half of 768 is 384. And that gives us a small square over here that is then going to be shown completely on our viewport, which is what we want to do. And now, with our object following this square, we can come over to the border here and we can move around just like this. Now you can see that it's moving right on the border. If that's not exactly what you want, you can come down here to the horizontal border. It's default 32 to 32, which means that as soon as the object that it's following gets to 32 pixels, either up or down, because right now they're both the same, upper right, left, down, uh, it's, it'll start moving the view. But if I change this to 100 and 100, then if I get a uh, further, if I get close to the edge, but not that close, it'll start moving, as you can see here. So this is the way you can adjust when the views start moving for the player moving around. I'm just going to keep mine by 32 by 32, just to keep it nice and simple. Now, let's get to the exciting part of actually drawing with views and keeping things where they're supposed to be. To do this nice and simple, we're actually going to create a couple scripts. So I'm going to create two scripts. This is going to be get view x and get view y. Now, this is actually going to be fairly simple, but if you haven't used a script, I'll explain it as we go. We're going to use two functions. We're going to say camera get view x. And if I middle click on this, it'll come up with what this does. And you can see this gives us the x position for the view of the given camera. Now the x position is, if we go to our room, this spot right here, the top left corner, the x and the y of wherever that view is at in the top left corner. So knowing that, we can then adjust everything we're drawn based on the top left view that we are inside of. So if we go to our workspace, we're going to say camera get view x, and we need to use a function called camera get active. And that is because you can create cameras dynamically and then assign them to different spots to show different things in your game. So this is going to get the camera that is being used, so whichever one has been assigned as active, and it will use it for you, and then get that correct information, and it will plug it in, so that whatever camera, whatever view you're using, it's going to get the correct X coordinate here. And now all we have to do is say return, and it will give us back the X coordinate. 
So I'm actually going to copy this whole thing, come into get view y, and paste it, and just change this y coordinate right here. And then inside of our obj square, I'm going to say draw text. And I'm going to use this function. So get view x, and make sure you use these brackets to call it. And I'm going to say get view y, and I'll put in this string. And the same thing for the sprite, as long as I can spell it. We're going to say get view x. Sorry, we need to call the sprite first. We're going to say sprite. Uh, we're going to draw the square, sub image of zero. And we're going to say get view x and get view y. Now I'm going to assign a plus 100 to each of these so that it's not being drawn over the text. And now if I run this, our sprite and our text will be drawn in this spot and it will be drawn correctly the whole time. Ooh. Except, of course, if you forget to do this part, which I mentioned. So make sure you call that function, otherwise it's not going to work properly, but it won't give you an error either. Now, if we move them around, we are all good to go. It will draw them exactly where they are on that view. And even if you go and you change views, so if I make this view not visible, and come down to viewport 3 and make it visible, and go 512 and what was that? 384. Press F5. Now viewport 3 is visible. They are still in the correct spot, but of course uh, we can't move because we didn't choose object following. So we do that again, and now we are. So you can see that with those functions, it's going to work no matter what. And even if we change uh, the size of all of this, it doesn't matter because it's getting right, it's getting back the correct coordinates no matter where they are or what size anything is. So that is going to work perfectly. The only thing that might come up is if you are using multiple cameras because then there could be more than one camera active if you're doing like a split screen scenario. So that would require a little more work on your part to pass in the camera that you want for the specific view, but that's later. If you have questions about that, let me know and I can help you out. So that's what I've got for you today. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions about it, if you have any comments, just let me know below. I love hearing from you guys. And that's all I've got for you today. So, as always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. If you find the content on my channel useful and you like it, consider supporting me on Patreon. All of the people on the screen are doing so, and they are awesome, and they get rewards, and you can join them. So, uh, thank you for your time, and have a wonderful day. <laughs>